Air France Flight 447 Air France Flight 447 was an overnight flight from Rio de Janeiro to Paris on an Airbus A330, carrying 228 people. Cruising at over 35,000 feet over the Atlantic, the aircraft entered a storm stretch of sky, the kind of turbulent weather often found in the intertropical convergence zone. What happened next would become one of aviation's most haunting tragedies. As the jet passed through icy clouds, tiny ice crystals blocked all three pitot tubes, the sensors that tell the pilots how fast they're flying. For a few seconds, airspeed readings became unreliable. The autopilot and autothrust disconnected, suddenly leaving the crew to fly the aircraft manually. Caught off guard, the pilot in control pulled the nose up. The A330 climbed, slowed, and then slipped into an aerodynamic stall. Despite stall warnings blaring and engines still able to provide power, the crew never realized the aircraft was stalled. They kept the nose high, and the plane remained in a stalled state for nearly four minutes, plunging toward the ocean until it hit the water. No one survived. The wreckage lay nearly 13,000 feet below the surface. It wasn't until 2011, two years after the crash, that investigators recovered the black boxes. The data told the full story. The final 2012 report revealed the chain of causes. Pitot icing triggered the automation loss, but the real disaster stemmed from human factors. Confusion over the unreliable speed readings, poor coordination under pressure, and a lack of training in high-altitude manual flying and stall recovery. The French BEA called for changes. Better pilot training, clear cockpit alerts when airspeed readings disagree, improved oversight, and more effective search and rescue. The tragedy of Flight 447 showed how quickly things can go wrong when pilots lose automation and get confusing speed readings. But years earlier, another flight faced a similar situation, West Caribbean Airways Flight 708, and the outcome was just as devastating. West Caribbean Airways Flight 708 This was a charter flight on August 16, 2005, operated by a McDonnell Douglas MD-82, heading from Panama City to Martinique. On board were 152 passengers, mostly French citizens returning from holiday, along with eight Colombian crew members. It was meant to be a routine overnight journey. It wasn't. Cruising at 33,000 feet, the aircraft's speed began to bleed away. So slowly, it went unnoticed. Then, without warning, the MD-82 slipped into an aerodynamic stall, the point where the wings could no longer produce enough lift to keep it flying. In the cockpit, the crew believed both engines had failed. They focused on trying to fix what they thought was a dual-engine flameout, never realizing the real danger. The nose was too high, and the plane was sinking through the thin air. For nearly three minutes, the aircraft fell from the sky. No standard stall recovery was attempted. Confusion, poor coordination, and mounting stress left the crew trapped in a deadly cycle of wrong assumptions. The jet slammed into a field on a cattle ranch near Machicas, Venezuela. All 160 people on board were killed instantly. The investigation led by Venezuela, with help from France's BEA and the US NTSB, found that pilot error was the main cause. The crew had failed to recognize and recover from the stall, and cockpit communication had broken down under pressure. Investigators also revealed deeper issues. West Caribbean Airways had not passed along a Boeing safety bulletin warning that the autopilot could hide a gradual loss of speed. The airline's crews were working under intense operational and financial stress. It wasn't the first time misleading speed data had played a role in a disaster. Nearly a decade earlier, another flight took off under a clear night sky, carrying vacationers home but it never made it past the coastline. This was Bergen Air Flight 301. Bergen Air Flight 301. On the evening of February 6, 1996, a Boeing 757 serving as Bergen Air Flight 301 leased to Dominican Airlines Alas Nacionales prepared to carry vacationers from Puerto Plata to Frankfurt, Germany with en route stops in Canada and Berlin. The aircraft had been parked for 20 days before the flight. Unknown to anyone, danger was already lurking in one of its pitot tubes. A mud dauber wasp had likely built a nest inside, blocking it completely. Moments after takeoff, the captain noticed his airspeed indicator wasn't matching the situation, but he chose to continue. His instrument falsely showed the jet accelerating past 300 knots, while the first officer's instruments correctly showed about 220 knots and dropping. The conflicting readings triggered overspeed warnings. The autopilot, trusting the captain's faulty data, pulled the nose up and reduced thrust. The plane began to lose speed. The stick shaker stall warning sounded. The autopilot disconnected. The first officer and a relief pilot urged corrective action, but the captain hesitated. By the time he pushed the throttles forward, the high nose angle starved the engines of airflow. One flamed out, the other, at full thrust, sent the aircraft into a deadly spin. In the dark of night, just 16 miles from Puerto Plata, the Boeing 757 inverted and slammed into the Atlantic Ocean. All 189 people aboard were killed instantly. 
Investigators concluded the blocked PTOC tube had caused the faulty readings that confused the crew. The report criticized the decision not to abort takeoff and led to sweeping safety changes. A tiny insect's nest had brought down a jet full of lives. Thirteen years later, another jet would fall from the sky, not because of a blocked PTOC tube, but because in a critical moment, the pilots made the wrong split-second choice. Colgan Air Flight 3407 Colgan Air Flight 3407 was a short regional flight under the Continental Connection brand using a Bombardier Q400 turboprop. On February 12, 2009, it left Newark, New Jersey, headed for Buffalo, New York. It was a cold winter night, with snow, fog, and light ice forming on the plane's wings and windshield as it neared Buffalo. The crew began their instrument approach to the runway when the stall warning system, the stick shaker, suddenly activated. This should have been the signal to push the nose down and add full power. Instead, the captain pulled back on the controls, the exact opposite of stall recovery. The autopilot had already disengaged, but the situation quickly spiraled. The stick pusher, a safety system designed to force the nose down during a stall, kicked in. Yet, the captain overrode it, pulling back again. To make matters worse, the first officer retracted the flaps without asking, removing extra lift the plane badly needed. The Q400 rolled violently, pulling forces up to two Gs. Just five miles from the runway, it slammed into a house in Clarence Center, New York. All 49 people on board and one person on the ground were killed instantly. The NTSB determined the main cause was the captain's improper reaction to the stall warning, which caused an unrecoverable aerodynamic stall. Contributing factors included poor monitoring of airspeed, breaking sterile cockpit rules, weak crew coordination, pilot fatigue, and inadequate airline procedures for flying in icy conditions. TransAsia Airways Flight 235 It was a clear February morning in 2015 when TransAsia Airways Flight 235, an ATR-72600, just under a year old, prepared for a short hop from Taipei Songshan Airport to Kinmen. On board were 58 souls, 53 passengers, and 5 crew, expecting a routine flight. Only minutes after takeoff, as the aircraft climbed to just over 1,600 feet, trouble struck. The right engine's automatic system malfunctioned, forcing it into idle. Instead of identifying the problem correctly, the pilots made a fatal mistake. They shut down the left engine, the one that was still running perfectly. With both engines now producing no usable thrust, the ATR began losing altitude fast. The plane rolled sharply to the left, skimming dangerously close to buildings. In those final moments, it clipped a taxi on an elevated roadway, injuring its two occupants, then slammed into a bridge before plunging upside down into the Keelung River. The water swallowed the wreckage in seconds. Miraculously, 15 people survived, but 43 lives were lost. Investigators from Taiwan's Aviation Safety Council, joined by experts from France and Canada, soon found the root cause. Tiny but critical flaws, faulty solder joints, and the right engine's control unit had triggered the auto feather. Yet the real disaster unfolded in the cockpit, where the crew's failure to follow emergency procedures and their poor coordination turned a manageable engine fault into a catastrophic double engine shutdown. With so little altitude left, there was no time to recover from the stall. The tragedy forced urgent safety changes. TransAsia's ATR pilots underwent retraining and new proficiency tests. Regulators overhauled emergency response procedures, and the airline's already shaky future worsened. TransAsia shut down entirely by late 2016. Execute Flight Flight 1526 Execute Flight Flight 1526 was a private charter using a British aerospace Hawker 700A, flying from Dayton, Ohio, to Akron Fulton Airport on November 10, 2015. Nine people were on board, two pilots and seven passengers headed for what should have been a short, routine trip. As the jet neared Akron, the weather was poor. Low clouds, limited visibility, and rain. The crew was flying a non-precision localizer approach to runway 25, relying on instruments to guide them in. But the approach was already unstable. They started their descent too late, then rushed down at nearly twice the normal rate. With the landing gear down and flaps extended, the airspeed began to bleed away. Normal approach speed was well above 120 knots, but the jet slowed down to just 98 knots. That's when disaster struck. The aircraft stalled, banking sharply before plummeting into a four-unit apartment building just two miles from the runway. A massive fire erupted. Everyone on board was killed instantly. But miraculously, no one on the ground was hurt. The investigation painted a troubling picture. Both pilots were fatigued, averaging only about six hours of sleep per night in the days before the crash. Records showed each had been dismissed from past flying jobs for performance problems. Yet the company hired them anyways. Execute Flight's safety culture was weak, and FAA oversight of such charter operations was lacking. Without a flight data recorder, not required for jets with fewer than 10 seats, investigators relied only on cockpit audio, limiting detail. 
The NTSB concluded the crash was caused by the crew's failure to maintain a safe speed during an unstable approach, their decision to not go around, and broader systemic failures in oversight, training, and safety management. Air Algeri Flight 5017 The aircraft was a McDonnell Douglas MD-83, built in 1996, and flown by Swift Air for Air Algeri under a summer wet lease to handle extra traffic. On July 24, 2014, it departed Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso for Algiers, Algeria, carrying 110 passengers and six crew. It was supposed to be a routine international flight. Cruising at 31,000 feet, the jet relied on its autopilot and autothrottle, which used engine pressure ratio sensors to manage speed. But in the stormy weather they were flying through, ice crystals likely clogged those sensors. The crew had not turned on the engine anti-ice system. With the sensors giving false readings, the autothrottle unknowingly reduced thrust far below what was needed to hold altitude. The aircraft began slowing. The autopilot, trying to keep altitude, pitched the nose higher and higher, pushing the wings toward their critical angle. Finally, the MD-83 entered a high-altitude aerodynamic stall. The stall warning sounded, but the crew never carried out the proper recovery. The autopilot disengaged. The jet rolled sharply, the nose dropped almost vertically, and the aircraft plunged into the Malian Desert. All 116 people on board were killed. The investigation led by Mali, with help from France's BEA, concluded the crash was caused by a deadly mix of mechanical, procedural, and human factors. The failure to activate engine anti-ice, icing of the EPR sensors, a slow response to the speed loss, missed all recovery, and autopilot logic that worsened the situation. In April 2016, the BEA issued more than 20 safety recommendations, calling for better ice protection systems, improved sensor design, enhanced pilot training for high-altitude stalls, and clear cockpit alerts. China Airlines Flight 140 Departing Taipei for Nagoya on April 26, 1994, China Airlines Flight 140 was an Airbus A300-600R, carrying 256 passengers and 15 crew. It was a typical evening flight between the two cities, with 271 people in total. As the aircraft neared Nagoya, everything seemed normal. The crew lined up for their final approach, just seconds from landing. Then, in a split second, the co-pilot accidentally pressed the takeoff slash go-around switch. This told the aircraft systems they wanted to abort the landing and climb away. The auto thrust increased engine power, and the autopilot began pitching the nose upward. The pilots tried to push the nose down, but they didn't realize the autopilot was still in go-around mode, quietly trimming the horizontal stabilizer all the way nose up. The controls became heavier and heavier. When the captain took over, even he couldn't overpower the system. The jet climbed steeply, then lost too much speed. At barely a few hundred feet above the ground, it stalled. With no room to recover, the Airbus slammed into the ground within the airport perimeter and burst into flames. Out of the 271 people on board, 264 lost their lives. The investigation by Japan's Aircraft Accidents Investigation Commission found that the chain began with the accidental activation of go-around mode and was made worse by the crew's misunderstanding of how the autopilot behaved in that mode. Airbus had already designed a modification to disengage the autopilot if manual inputs were made during go-around, but this aircraft didn't have it. The report also faulted inadequate crew training on the A300's automation and delayed intervention. Aeroflot Flight 5143 Aeroflot Flight 5143 was supposed to be a routine domestic trip on July 10, 1985, flying a Tupolev Tu-154B2 from Karshi in the Uzbek SSR to Leningrad with a stop in Ufa. The aircraft, built in 1978, had already logged over 12,000 flight hours. On board were 191 passengers, many of them children and nine crew members. Cruising high over the Kizilkum Desert at about 38,000 feet, the jet was flying dangerously close to its stall speed. The warning signs were there, vibrations rattling the airframe. But the crew misread them. Believing they were dealing with engine compressor surges, they made a fatal move, reducing thrust instead of adding it. With every passing second, the speed dropped further. The lift vanished. The Tupolev stalled and slipped into a deadly flat spin, a type of stall where the aircraft falls almost like a leaf, offering no chance of recovery. Spinning helplessly through the thin air, the jet plummeted toward the desert. Seconds later, it slammed into the ground near Achkaduk. All 200 people on board were killed instantly. The investigation, carried out under Soviet-era secrecy, revealed a chilling sequence of mistakes. The crash stemmed from the flat spin brought on by dangerously low speed, worsened by hot outside temperatures and the aircraft's heavy weight. The crew had failed to maintain a safe speed and never recognized the stall until it was far too late. Fatigue likely played its part. The pilots had been stranded for nearly 24 hours before departure, enduring extreme heat on the ground. 
that long, grueling wait may have dulled their judgment in the sky. 